So hi Kelly, thank you for joining me today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Amazing. Yeah, really good. Yeah, amazing. So let's tell our viewers who are you and what do you do? Okay, my name's Kelly Barker. I live near London, well, an hour from London, and I um, have the autism awareness clothing company called Born Anxious, which was set up um, inspired by my son who has complex autism, and it's a positive um awareness of autism in the community and invisible disabilities yeah so tell me more about your experience with mental health uh my experience um with mental health is um i advocate a lot for other people that have um, mental health issues or invisible disabilities anxiety um and my journey with um mental health would be since Oscar's diagnosis, I've had quite a lot of anxiety about the future, about how vulnerable he is. Um, it's really opened my eyes to um, the world, really, and how it's not really kind enough. Um, so I think that's inspired me to be more of an advocate for people with no voice or vulnerable groups, minorities. Um, and personally, I did have uh, an incident where my own mental health was very low. I was at a time where we were mid-diagnosis for Oscar. Things were really difficult. And I sat in my car alone um, and it just dawned on me that I was on my own. I wasn't really signposted at that point to any support groups. And the first thing I did was blog and I reached out to other parents who might be feeling in the same place as me. And I got great feedback yeah. um, and it just, it just kind of shows that talking is key. I think if you're really transparent, you know, I know that cliche, it's okay not to be okay, but actually when you're not okay, the hardest thing to do in the world is talk to people. Yeah. So I think when people share their experiences of when they do and how positive that can be, um, it's great. And for me, it really worked. I was signposted. I was actually rescued from my car by someone who works at the school because they saw I was still there an hour later um and she brought me into the school told me about all the support that was there a lot of those things are under the surface and until you ask you don't know it's there yeah um or they only seem to be on offer when you're in crisis you know whereas people that have used those services like social work clinics support groups if they could maybe be a bit more vocal about their experiences other people then might think oh actually i think we might need a bit of that and and step in and be more proactive about your own health mental health before you get to that point where you feel alone because it's not a nice place and i was very empty i was i was absolutely exhausted um and we rebuilt that um security really quickly because we were signposted to all the right places and it is there but it, if you could maybe dip in and out of that before you really need it it might help build you um some more resilience that you know so for me my um my journey is i've been there i've been in my car thinking this it's all on me yeah. like i'm alone i i, d I didn't know uh, I was a very new autism parent. I was feeling like I was drowning. I was trying to cope, but I wasn't. I had anxiety about getting it wrong. I wasn't really sure what services there were. And I was afraid to kind of admit defeat. At first, I thought it was a bit of a fight. Yeah. Um, and I don't think there's any winners or any superheroes in autism. I think it's really, really blinking hard and you have to tool up emotionally with what you need to get through. There's no big badges for people that do it all on their own. It's not about being a hero. Yeah. And I think, you know, now Oscar's nearly seven, I've realised that actually we couldn't parent him the way we do without those supports there. And they're not in our face all the time, but we can dip in and out of them. Now we've 
acquainted ourselves with that with those different supports and it might only be other parents or other people we can dip in and out and they kind of propping us up yeah you know we feel like someone's got our back so i think the most important thing is to be really transparent about your own mental health give yourself a little mot um because when things go wrong you can internalize that and then you get guilt you can blame yourself and actually there's a lot of power in somebody else going oh don't worry i've done that as well and actually i found that if i do this or if i talk to that person you know because a lot of it's about confidence when you're given a really complex kid or situation or you know not not only about autism let's say mental health in general it's normally things that pile up pile on top pile on top and then you feel like you can't unpick where it's gone wrong yeah. and that's what i was kind of saying about having an mot because i think it's really easy then to pinpoint one thing where you say actually this is going to get out of control if i don't you know yeah because most of us have got that internal compass we do know when things are not quite right um and be able to share that so that we keep our own confidences up because when you start talking it's easy to carry on i think you have to keep the conversation going and be honest yeah. you know i'm not saying oh i was really low and i got fixed and now i'm all all right but what i tend to do is try and keep positive about it so you know yesterday was really hard really hard and we we'd had three hours sleep we'd had a seizure we'd had loads of difficult behavior and we went to bed thinking thank god tomorrow's brand new so we didn't take any of that negative to the next day yeah so you have to give yourself the opportunity to start again and always give yourself that one more day don't carry on that negative and think oh well i'm failing again you know it's gone wrong a bit today yeah but i didn't add yesterday onto it yeah it was an isolated incident it went a bit pear-shaped about lunchtime because oscar got into the games cupboard and he emptied every single ball game all over the floor and then he was swimming in them and then i thought he'd had a marble in his mouth but we had a low level response and actually it ended up that we would you know playing a board game taking turns which is huge to him so although the house looked like i was losing a game of jumanji i took a positive from it yeah and gave myself a little pat on the back because i think that if you don't use your own skills like for me i don't compare myself to other people i think that's really important because our goals and what's really big to us might be really trivial to somebody else but you have to celebrate your own defeats yeah because it's your journey and what might really get you down or bug you or you know make you anxious might not mean anything to somebody else and also the reverse of that you know we all have things that make us feel really good about ourselves and i think it's about letting yourself enjoy things you know like let it's it's not all about it being hard yeah all the all the time and mental health isn't always about um dealing with it when it's bad i think sometimes mental health can be about celebrating relationships that you're making enjoy communicating with people and keeping your mental health healthy um because a lot of mental health awareness and campaigns it's almost like firefighting like they'll deal you know services and they're, they're there when things go wrong but actually what about the maintenance of mental health yeah and promoting healthy work you know a healthy state of mind let's not just um because i think the taboo comes from when when you mention mental health people assume that you have a mental health issue yeah. and that you are in need of some sort of 
uh, medical intervention or you're not yourself you know there's a bit of a taboo isn't there all you know they've got mental health issues yeah. and that covers a lot and i think where the clothing company comes in is that autism or any neuron you know um any anything neuro anything to do with brain it's invisible and so is mental health yeah and so you get that assumption that because somebody's acting in a certain way that you know that they're, they're not quite right um and i think if we concentrate and we bring more to the forefront about keeping mentally healthy in a positive way be involved in that in supporting mental health doesn't mean you've got a mental health issue because that, that keeps the conversation going doesn't it because then everyone's aware because everybody whether they've got a mental health issue or not everybody has mental health it's either healthy or it's not yeah so I think there's a bit of a bridge that needs to be built there for me, I think, and especially in autism parenting, because we're the proudest people in the world and we're not, we're very busy. So we don't necessarily have time to assess our own mental health. Yeah. You're either really proactive at it, like I am, because obviously mine um, was, was in crisis at one point. So I make it my job to make sure. Um, but I think special needs parents are really, really busy um, because I'm a PA. I'm a, you know, Oscar's paperwork is ridiculous. Um, lots of phone calls all the time, lots of appointments. And it's really easy to forget about yourself and just think, oh, well, I'll deal with that another day because I'm busy. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that have got high pressure jobs and, and that are busy also overlook. I agree. I totally agree. Mental health. Yeah. So that's mine. I'm a bit of an advocate um, for promoting um, being mentally healthy. Yeah. Because I know what it feels like to not. Yeah. Um, so and and what, yeah. Would you, what would you tell to people that are suffering behind closed doors? I think what you need to sort of tell yourself is that actually judge. Um, judge your mental health nothing's too silly if it matters to you it matters it's full stop nothing's too silly so if you do a little bit of a you know have a little bit of time in your own head i always find going to sit near the sea or going to sit near woods or anywhere near nature is really calming yeah or find a five or ten minute meditation thing and do it on um youtube and just have some time in your own head and you know if you're not feeling quite right or you're feeling like you know certain things are taking over don't wait until you get to the point where you can't cope talk talk to somebody about it you can talk to people online anonymously via messenger or you can find doesn't have to be something that's labeled a mental health it could be yeah. a support group online is really really good I've written on um, support groups at like one o'clock in the morning before and someone's replied. So that's a really good way because it's always around the clock. But I think what I would um, say is do a little MOT, even if you don't think you need one, do a little MOT of yourself and write down a few things that you feel might, you know, it's, it's not about bettering yourself. It's not about what do I do right? What do I do wrong? It's about how do I feel? Not how do I feel about you or how do I feel about them? How do I feel? Because it's really hard to do. It is actually really hard to do. Um, yeah, so you know what? Nothing's too silly and you do matter. And also, if you're a mum or your dad, if you're not all right, then the likelihood is that that is going to rub off on other people. Yeah. And even if you're not a parent, if you're a colleague or a friend, or even if you're single, we all get used to as adults not putting ourselves first. And you don't realise, because we let life take over, you don't realise it creeps up on you. And you don't want to get to the point where you don't recognise yourself anymore because you have to be, you have to own your own story a bit. Yeah. Um, and 
if you if if you do if you do a little OT and you think oh I don't need um you know I don't, I don't need to tap into anything at least you're you've made yourself aware and I think if you do that you'll find that you're doing it more regularly like I've done a little MOT earlier on on myself and I definitely need sleep yeah because I'm very tired and I'm ratty so I know that but um me, you know mental health also I find exercise really helps me hydrating myself really helps me what I eat really helps me and until you make them changes you don't realize how powerful they are yeah. I'm not saying I'm a beacon of health because I'm not um but you can really change um the way you feel by getting enough sleep you know get stretch your legs get some fresh air make sure you're drinking enough water change your diet because too much sugar and all things like that if you are a little bit depressed or you're a little bit low actually that's not going to help you yeah um so yeah just just try and be a bit more aware and look after yourself a little bit and don't feel silly if you do feel silly get your confidence up and maybe join a group where you can just message or write something on there because you're still talking then you've still opened it you know you've still um made an effort and i think nothing's too small because everyone really you know everyone matters yeah um you know because we are a little bit of a you know generation of you know oh no i won't bother them you know yeah um and i think that the next generation coming through which you're part of um i'm old you're not <laughs> um is definitely you know my daughter's 18 definitely there's change coming about um you know transparency and diversity and it's really refreshing but it doesn't mean if you are um older that you you can't tap in to that you know it's it's, it's brilliant that it's um you know more diverse and more transparent but it's it doesn't mean that it can't be for everyone um so yeah i definitely think you know confidence is a massive part of it but when you do talk to somebody or or um engage in anything like that um it's a lot easier then you're you know you have to make that that step yeah well i just want to say um thank you for coming on today I greatly appreciate you spending some time um, and sharing your story and how to help others. It's really inspiring. And I think what you're doing is amazing, you know, to support not just the autism community, but the, new, the neurodiversity community um, and to help others is really amazing. So thank you for doing what you're doing. Oh, thanks, Oliver. Thank you as well. And um, we'll get a, a trip planned to London when lockdown's over. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. See you soon. Bye. Take care.